Hey everyone, my name is Donald, and in this video we're going to discuss how to edit your V2 elements and the settings that they offer, as well as what V2 elements are available for you to use. So once we've gone ahead and we've added a section into our page, we have multiple elements on the left-hand side that allow us to uh, insert content to our site. All of these are called elements. We have V2, which you can see right here in the white block or the classic elements right down here, and they're in the gray and underneath the classic elements section. Let's go ahead and start discussing a few of the elements. Let's begin with accordion. The accordion is available um, in Pro X and inside of Cornerstone uh, Page Builder or Standalone. It's also, a, uh, it's also available in the Content Builder, the Header Builder, and the Footer Builder. You can go ahead and change any style of the accordion that you wish. And from there, let's go ahead and get started. So right here on the left-hand side, you see the add item section. From there, we can go ahead and add as many accordions as we need. And we'll go ahead and add a few of those just to see that you can go ahead and add more. From there, you can also duplicate the existing accordion and you can also delete them as well through this button. We have this set up. So the basic font size, let's change this to two. This changes everything inside the accordion to a bigger font size. We have a width, so we can change the width of them. So let's do 200 pixels. You can see that it changes the pixel width. You can also use uh, percentages. So if you want to use uh, 50%, it'll be 50% across the page width. And you also have max width. Enable grouping uh, is turned off by default. So if you turn this on, it only allows you to have one accordion open at a time. And if you turn off grouping, it allows you to open up multiple accordions at one time. From there, we can and select our background color of all the accordions. Now this may be a little confusing because it doesn't select it on the individual accordions, but rather the background of the entire element. Let's go ahead and change that back. The margin. So if we wanted to add a margin around all of our accordions, you can see that we have zero margin here, and then we have a one EM margin here. And it's just a margin around the entire element not each individual accordion, but around the entire element. And you can tell because right now we're just doing the accordion under setup. If we want to go, we'll go ahead and dive more into uh, styling each one of the accordions as well. Padding is the same. Go ahead and add a one in padding. Now the difference between padding and margin is if you add a background image, the padding is going to allow you to add um, more of that background image. Instead, if you do the margin, it does not. So there's a little bit of a difference there. <clears throat> the border, let's go ahead and add a border. Let's add a solid five pixel border. And we're gonna make this black. So you can see that it adds a border around the entire element itself. Let's go ahead and turn that off. Border radius. If we wanted to, um, you see how there's uh, corners up here on the red, and you can see that uh, it doesn't match there. If we added the border radius, it gets rid of that. And you'll see that more with the, the border radius there. And we can go ahead and change the roundness of all of the borders. Box shadow. Box shadow is uh, pretty self-explanatory. Once you have your color selected, you can turn on your blur. And then we'll also add some spread. And we'll make this black. Too much. Too much. All of, everything's in EM. It's two pixels. So 10 pixels. 10 pixels. Let's do this as a 
minor box shadow. But you can see that it adds the entire box shadow to the entire element. Okay, so that's all for the main element styling. We also have this section up here at the top where you can apply a preset or save your preset here. Uh, underneath of the design, basically these are just two uh, anchors that take you to certain parts of this part of this um, designer. Let's go ahead and navigate to items. So we have items set up. We have a few different options here. And let's go ahead and navigate through them as well. So the spacing allows you to control the spacing between each accordion item. You can go ahead and type in whichever you want to um, set there. The overflow right here is toggled on. It ensures that the headers that have a, a really long content, it's gonna use the overflow technique. Um, so it's going to have an ellipsis in, instead of wrapping. So, for example, let's go ahead and type a really long title. This is an accordion has a long title. It's obviously not long enough. That is really long. So you can see that we have that. And we'll go to the accordion. We'll go to the items. And then we're going to make sure that we have overflow. Overflow turned on and overflow turned off, which does not seem to be working. It's supposed to give you an ellipse, an ellipsis. So that's unfortunate that there's a bug there. Okay, so once you've gone ahead and done that, like I said, you can control the spacing. You can control the background color of the individual accordions. So you have things like this, which is the content. So you're controlling all the content right now. Go ahead and navigate back to the accordion. Thanks guys for the comments. There are so many page builders out there that have different features. Um, Elementor has uh, a simple design. Uh, and then we have XM Pro that gets really into the nitty gritty on being able to customize every single part of the element. So there's also, I mean, it's two different, two different builders, depending on what project you're working on, on might be um, a better page builder out there for you. So we're back in items. We have the background color of the item. Let's go ahead and turn this off. Let's go underneath of the padding and we can go ahead and choose more padding. So the entire padding for the item, zero. We have the item border, so we can add a border to the single items. Let's go ahead and add a black one. You can see that we can do that there. Same with the border radius. Change the border radius. And then we have item box shadows, which you can somewhat see down here. Let's go ahead and change it to a white one. Allow the spread to be a little bit more. And you can see we have a white box shadow down here. Then that's it for the items. Let's go ahead over to the headers. So for the headers, we're going to be talking about this part right here. Let's see. Okay. So we have the headers. We have the overflow on. Uh, the indicator turned off. So we don't have to have the icon right here. Let's see. Uh, the background color of the header, so we can go ahead and change that. 
let's go ahead and change the text just so it's more visible. So we have the header margin. Let's do it too. So this gives you a little bit more padding around it. And then we also have the padding that we can adjust. So if we want it to all be 20 pixels, we can do that. We can also make it 30 pixels and have them linked or unlinked. This allows you to go ahead and edit each one individually. And if they're linked, they're all take the size of the first one. We have the header borders. So as we mentioned before, we can go ahead and hit solid, have a different border for these. And then we can also unlink this so that we can change the ones for top and bottom. So if we have a bigger bottom border, then we can on the top or sides. Hey Rick, glad you can finally make it. Uh, we also have the same with the border radius, so we can adjust that. The header box shadow, as we mentioned before, we can change that. And then we have the text format. So from here, we can choose the font family that we've gone ahead and we've um, created inside of our templates for our font manager. We have different font weights, depending on which font you've chosen different font sizes, letter spacing, we'll go ahead and add spaces between the letters, and line height changes the line height of if you have more than one line of text in that element. The header text style, we have italic or normal. We can center them, write a line, or justify to the same width of the uh, everything. Text decoration, we can do an underline, strike through both, one or the other. We have text transform, so we can have everything uppercase, everything to be uh, normal, and then we have, we have everything lowercase. And then of course, text color, and then the interaction color. So we want it to be red when we hover, it'll change to red when we hover. And we also have text shadow options, which is the same as the box shadow, except it will apply it just to the text only. So you can see we have a shadow behind the text when we're not hovering over top of it. And you can see that better if we go ahead and make that white or red. You can see that it's changing subtly in the background. Changing the font style won't affect any editing you make with this, right? So changing the font style, are you uh, referring to the font family? So if I change it to this one, it's going to change the font family. Or if I do 23 or male, depending on what's been chosen. And then you can go ahead and change the font weight if there's one available. And then you have the font size changes as well. Is that what you're referring to? Like Google font. So if you made a template for fonts and assigned it to, let's say 23, and you changed this on the back end of your templates underneath of templates right here, it will change it wherever you have 23 assigned. So yes, it will be like a global change. Let's go ahead and navigate over to content. So in the content, we're mainly looking at this section right here. Let's go ahead and navigate to content. We have a background color, so let's go ahead and make this green. We have the content margin, which adds the margin around the content. And we also have padding. So right now it's at 20, we can make that 50. And you see the green has more padding around it now. Change it back down to 20. Content border, right now it's got a subtle one pixel border. We can make that two pixels, 10 pixels, whatever you want the pixels to be. Content border radius is the same as we discussed before. It allows you to go ahead and add a rounded corners to it. Box shadow, same as well. We have the box shadow here. 
you may not be able to see it depending on what settings you have because we have so many borders enabled. Uh, same with the font family and the font text format. You can change your text format here. Have it be whatever font weight you've enabled. Change the font size. Letter spacing. And the line height. So you can see there's more space between the different lines or you can make it go smaller. Um, same with the content text style, italic, um, left, center, right, justified. And then you have underlined, you have straight through, text transform upper, uppercase, uh, normal, which will keep, or everything will be capitalized the first letter of the sentence. I'm sorry, the first, first letter of every word will be capitalized. And then you have all lowercase, change the text color. And then we also have the text shadow that we discussed previously. Right there. Just like that. And then we also have the customized section. The customized section allows you to add IDs, classes, and in some cases, element CSS, so that we can go ahead and target different, um, we can go ahead and apply inline CSS to this element. And in order to do that, you just have to start with uh, dollar sign EL, and then you have your um, CSS here. You can add whatever you want to your section. Okay, so this is the accordion element. Now, there's so many different settings for each element that a lot of these are gonna be a little bit of a repeat. Um, so we'll go ahead and speed through those just so uh, everybody knows what font family does and box shadow and text shadow does now after looking at the accordion. Let's go ahead and delete this. Let's go to our next one and we have an alert. The alert, let's see, let's go ahead and get the alert going. Basically the alert allows you to put a um, alert styled box and then you can add text of, of whatever you want to do. So let's go ahead and there's a very few settings for these. You have your presets, uh, this, uh, the setup. So basically the close allows you to turn it on or off. If you notice over here on the right hand side, there was an X and now it's gone. You can turn that on and off. This allows you to put dismissible alerts, um, or you can have one that's just constant there all the time. We have the width of auto set, which is um, what we can do is we can do 100 pixels as well. You can also do 500 pixels. 500 pixels. Um, and then you can also do 100%. You can do all of those, max width as well. Content is where you can go ahead and type in all of the text for the alert. This is where all your text goes. The background color of the alert can be whatever color you want it to be. The alert margins. So as we mentioned before, right now this is the alert. Let's go ahead and add a margin. This adds it to the entire alert. You can see that there's a little bit of a margin around the column around inside the column now, when before there wasn't. Same with the padding. So if we wanted the padding to be different, right now it's got one on the top and bottom and 2.75 on the left and right. And we can go ahead and change it so that's all one, all three, all two, whatever you want it to be. We have the options for a border. So as we mentioned before, it goes ahead and adds a subtle border to your alert. You can go ahead and add that. Border radius, we have uh, three pixels right now. We can go ahead and increase that or decrease. Uh, the box shadow, as mentioned before, we have a strong box shadow here. Let's see. We can add a box shadow. 
Uh, the text format, as we mentioned before, you can change the text, the weight, the font size, uh, the letter spacing, the alert style, left, centered, right, justify, underline, straight through, all of those are there. And then we have the text shadow here as well. We also have the customized section where we can go ahead and add the ID, the class, and the element in style, uh, CSS. If you wanted to go ahead and specifically add CSS to just that element, we can go, you can go ahead and do that. Okay. Let's go to audio. Okay, audio has a way so you can embed SoundCloud or things of that nature to your um, website. Let's go ahead and check and see how this works. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna share and we're going to embed a SoundCloud file into here. So you can go ahead and embed it right here. So there's not too many set, uh, options here, but you can use, um, if you're embedding it or if you're actually having a player, you can do that. You have your width. You also had the margins, so you can add those. And then we have a way to customize this so we can add an ID, a class, or an element, CSS, in line with the actual item. Very simple for audio. Okay, let's go ahead and navigate to breadcrumbs. So the breadcrumbs is there to allow you to see um, the different layers of leveling for pages or products or posts that you have. You can change it so that your home label, instead of it being home, it can be an icon. You can chill up your different icon here. You have your max width and your width as well. You could do your justification and direction. So if you did center, <clears throat> um, it would go ahead and make those changes. You also are able to go ahead and change all of the fonts down here. Change your background if you want to. Reverse it so that it goes in a reversed order. Let's go back to initial. And we have the margins right here. We have the padding. You can add your border like before, your border radius, your different box shadow. And so if you wanted to go ahead and add a box shadow, we can make this here like this. Let's go ahead and add a subtle shadow. And then we can also offset the X. See how the shadow moves to the right or the left. And then we have the Y axis, which means it'll navigate up or down. So we can have it completely offset just like that. And of course you can type in whatever values you want. You're not limited to the max of what it goes to. Let's see. And you can all, like I said before, you can also type in pixels if you wanted to do pixels, or you can click the button right here and you can select which one is available through the methods that you want to go ahead and add. Okay, we also have a way to, we have the text shadow, the links. So this gets very detailed into what you can actually um, enable and change on your website. So you have the links padding, then you have the links margins, links borders. Let's go ahead and show you what one would look like if we changed it. So individual links borders. And then from there, you can see the different changes we make here. So if we went to two, we can also do 10 pixels. Have that there for everyone to uh, change border radius. And we also have the text shadow as well. A lot of different controls for every aspect of the site, which is 
which is pretty great if you want to go ahead and, and format those all. Let's go ahead and move on to our next one, which is going to be the button, which is one that I'm sure everyone uses on their website. All right, the button. So the button allows you to go ahead and save a preset or you can go ahead and apply a preset. The base font size, so you can go ahead and change the font size for everything. Let's go ahead and change it to two. You can also do uh, per font size in the primary text format. And then you can also enable a secondary text format, which we'll get to in a minute. So we have the width. So if we want it to be 300 pixels, we can do that. We can do a different background here. The link. The link is something where you can go ahead and put in um, your entire link, or you can put uh, just the slug of your website. You can just do it like that. You can also have it open in the new tab. And if you want to go ahead and it be a email link, you can just click on the email and go ahead and type your email. And then the subject you want, when people click on this button to email you, it'll automatically put the subject in. And then the telephone number you can add right here. You don't have to add tell uh, column bef uh, before. You can just type in the number. So just like this. So you have a couple different options. You have content flex layout. So let's go ahead and we'll switch it from row to column. And you'll see that it doesn't make any difference. But let's go ahead and go back to row. And we're going to go to graphic. Right down here, we're going to enable this. We have our graphic enabled here. If we go back to our column, it's going to go ahead and put the graphic on top of the button instead of it being on the to the left or to the right of it. It'll put it on top or bottom. You can also reverse the layout. So depending on which of these layouts you have chosen, you can reverse it so the icon's on the bottom. Or if you have a row, you can reverse it so that the um, icon is after the text. Uh, for horizontal, you have your start, end, center, space between the space around. So these are great if you have, uh, right now they're both start for center. If you want the button to be left aligned, you can do start, end for right aligned, space between if you want them to be spaced apart. And spaced around lets you put some spacing on the left and the right and in the middle. Same with vertical, you have start, center, end, and stretch. The margin for the button itself, you can go ahead and add that. And you can see that it adds a margin around it right here. And then we have our padding. So by default, these are our padding settings. If we want to go ahead and change that, we can go ahead and add one, uh, two, one, two. So you can see that we've gone ahead and added our different paddings for all of this. And you can link them so they're all the same or you can actually make it so that they're individually controlled. The border lets you add a go ahead. The border allows you to add a um, border of your choice from the drop down, And you also have your options for width and color. The border radius is automatically 0.35. So you can make that a square button if you want to go ahead and do that. And then you can go ahead and add that. Ronald says, great to make a mail button or telephone button. How to add semantic markup. Is that possible here? What are you referring to when you're saying semantic? Do you mean you want to add um, a body text or something like that? We have the box shadow, which you can see is present currently. And if we can go ahead and get rid of that, you see that it does not have a box shadow anymore. And you have your text set up. So right now it just says learn more. Let's go ahead and change that to get started. And then when we go to secondary text, we can make it so that there's text below. Now. 
so it's right below it. So we have a two-lined button that allows us to have a primary and secondary text. You can change the spacing of the texts here. Uh, default is 0.35, and you can reverse them so that the secondary is on top and that the primary is on bottom. Interaction overflow, you can have them so that they change um, animations. So we do slide left, scale down, flip Y. You can see the different changes there. Yeah. Um, great way to add some quick animation to your site if you wanted to go ahead and do that. Let's go and off to the text margin. We have all of the text margins allowed to be able to be changed. Let's go to 10. So we have 10 pixels all around our text. Font family, we can go ahead and change that for the primary. And we also have secondary text formatting over here that allows us to change that singular by itself um, or anything like that. Uh, Ronald says, I'm sorry, maybe I don't know the correct English. Is it the code to tell Google what the text is about, like address, telephone number? Karen, I agree about the box shadows. It would be great because I don't do box shadows at all on the, on the websites normally. Carson, if you want to have two buttons and have them underneath of each other, they go beside each other if there is room for it. So if we do button... So they go beside each other. If we do, let's see. I'm thinking that there might be a setting inside of here. It's possible that you might have to have it 100% width for it to go below each other, which is unfortunate. We go, which is unfortunate, but it might be the only way to do the on top of each other for buttons. Um, do you mean meta text or alt text? Uh, yeah, let us know, Karen, if you can do that. I mean, um, Ronald, if that's what you're talking about. Uh, Bob, you cannot add gradients inside of a button like Divi unless you're using the uh, fuel, unless you insert this CSS right here. That's where you would have to insert the CSS for that button. There's no um, setting to go ahead and add a gradient. You could just do a regular background right here. And you're not even able to do, you're not even able to do um, uh, image or anything like that either. So those could be some things that could be improved upon. So once we've done formatting our secondary text format, we have the text style. You know, so that we do center, right, uh, left align, things of that nature, different colors. So if we wanted it to be white, we could do that. Text shadow, and then we have our graphic set up. So if we have the graphic off, there would be no graphic. Graphic on, we have a graphic on the left. We could change that from a font awesome icon or a custom icon if you upload it, or an image. We can have that here. The icon and image interaction, you can have different things happen here. So if you do flip X up, it flips up. Uh, you also have the options to do margins for your graphic. And then you also have the ability to change the graphic size by itself. And if you want to go ahead and enable a secondary graphic, you can do that. So right now, when you hover, it has a different icon than when you uh, first had uh, the icon on the page. Go ahead and change the different colors. So secondary means on the left hand side, right here you have secondary, you have the secondary icon, the interaction color, and the interaction background. So you can see that it changes there. The graphic icon border, so you can add the border there. 
if for some reason you wanted to go ahead and do that. Uh, border radius. Uh, the box shadow, the text shadow. So you can add those two as well. Then we have the primary and secondary particle setups. Now particles are something that we haven't discussed in the V2 elements, uh, but we'll go ahead and do that now. So let's go ahead and we're gonna start over with a clean button. Just so you guys can get the hang of what the what it looks like without all the stuff that we've added. So the primary particle setup. Once you've turned that on, you have a few different options. The location of the particle. So if you want that at the bottom, center, top, left, right. Right now we're going to keep it at the bottom. And if we hover, it's a little bit hard to see because of the blue outline. But you can see a little bit that it is at the bottom of the button. We have the overlap. So I'll show you what this looks like more with um, a couple different settings. Scale uh, all X and Y. This is if you wanted to go scale up and down, scale left and right, or if you wanted to just kind of appear from the middle. And then you have your delay. So when you hover over, we'll just do, we'll just show an example. So one second, and you can also do a milliseconds. So when I hover over the button, there's going to be a one second delay before you see the black border on the bottom. There. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger, just so we can see what we're working with. You can see that was a one second delay. Change that to milliseconds. You can change that to either seconds or milliseconds so that you can actually see what is going on. We'll do scale X which is going to there. And then we'll do scale all, which kind of appears from the center. Um, now the transform starts from, the transform is whatever you're picked here. So if we wanted to start from the bottom right, which you can see here, let's put that at zero. You can see it's gonna appear in the bottom right here over here, and it's gonna go left. If we chose center, it'll appear from the center. And then same if we choose left or right or something like that. So left. And then we can also choose right. We have the primary particle style. So the width and height. The width is basically the width of uh, the particle. So as you can see right now, it goes 100%. But I chose 50%. It'll only do 50% of the button. You can also do 10 pixels. I only want it pixel, or if I wanted a percentage. Um, same with the height. You could do 100% height, have it like that, or you could do 10 pixels, just like that. So let's go ahead and we can also change the radius. So if we want it to be a 100 pixel radius, change it into a circle. We could also change the color. right there and then you have a spot for inline CSS which can be used to personally I've done it to add a background image to the particle so that when you hover over a menu item it shows the background image instead of showing the um, color or something of that nature now let's go ahead and put a primary particle style in action I want to have it so that when you hover over this button it's gonna go ahead and swipe from left to right hundred percent so we're gonna start at the location. We're just gonna put center. It's gonna be placement inside and I'll show you what outside is in a minute. It's so gonna start left. We're gonna do 100% here, 100% here, and zero radius. And then let's go ahead and transform starts from left. Scale X. So you can see that it goes ahead and it does a swipe. Let's go ahead and make this a full red. There you go. So we can do that and then we'll show example of what placement does. So let's go ahead and make a 50 pixel. A 50 pixel. We want this to be a 100 pixel 
radius. So right now we've got this. Mm, let's do 10. Maybe 30. I just need to be big enough. Like a big circle like this. So we'll go ahead and have this. We have the location at the bottom. So we have the bottom. And if we do placement on overlap, that's going to allow 50% of the particle to be outside and 50% to be inside. So this is a great way to add on, um, if you have your inline navigation, you can add this particle to your inline navigation and allow it to be what's shown if somebody is active on that page or hovering on that page. It's just a great way to add a little bit of a, a flare to it. So if we do the right hand side, you can see it's over there. So that if we hit none for the animation, it'll just fade in. So we have this particle on the right hand side, but now we want to add, but we want two of them. We want another one over here. So we can actually go ahead to our secondary particle setup. And if we turn that on, we'll see that we have that same black bar, black bar on the bottom. And we can make that more noticeable by adding that. So this allows us to add basically two animations to our, to our button. Um, if we want to go ahead and copy the same settings from over here, we can do that. So we'll do left, we'll do overlap, scale none, no delay, start from the left. We'll do, uh, this was um, 30 pixels, 30 pixels, 100 radius. We'll keep it black just so we can tell the two apart. And we have the two different particles over here on the right and the left. It's a great way to add a little bit of animation to it as well. There's also a way that you can add it so that it uh, and I'm sure you've seen some of the demos that the Inco has. Let's do 100%. Turn this off. So we have our right over here. And if we go ahead and do the same over here. And if for some reason you're like, well, why is it not 100%? It's because we have our overlap turned on. So we have 100% now. So if we turn our overlap off, and we go ahead and turn off this, do a transparent here. I'm gonna do a 500 millisecond delay. So when we hover the right, it'll completely be red, and then it'll have a black uh, come in from the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and narrow this down to 200 milliseconds. And you can see that it does have two animations. Which markup? No, not that I know of, Donald, uh, Ronald, sorry. Uh, not that I know of for the rich markup. Only way I found to have two buttons on top of each other was to make two different sections and add button in each remove padding. You could do that, which is unfortunate, um, but it seems like that could be the only way to do it. Okay, so for our buttons, that's that's basically the gist of it. And you also have the customize where you can do ID, class, and element CSS. Uh, I think I forgot to mention, but you can also hide elements during breakpoints. So if you want it to hide on desktop, you can click that. Hide on laptops, tablets, phones, and smaller phones, you could do that. Now, if you hide it on the desktop, you see that it disappears. So there's no way to edit this anymore. But if you go ahead to your skeleton mode, you can click on the button, and you'll be able to see that you can go ahead and turn that off. Then you can leave skeleton mode. A small gap. True, yeah. 
Let's try it. Got a gap here. And then we have another button. Yep, that'll work. Listen to what Karsten's saying. Add a gap. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to go ahead and move on to content area. Let's go ahead and delete this entire section. We'll add a new one. Content area. This basically allows you to add raw content to your site, HTML, whatever you want it to be. You can go ahead and add that right here. You also have the customized section for ID, class, and element CSS, as well as the hide on specific devices. Very simple for this part. We have the content area off canvas. I'm sorry, content area drop down. Now, this drop down allows you to have, when you click on this, it'll have a, a any content that you want down here. So think of the content area, but then you have a button that triggers it so it's hidden initially. So from here you can add all of your content. Okay, and then you have toggle settings. So you have your base font, which is increases or decreases the font initially. You have your height and your width. So we can change this to four. That makes the height and width of this background image uh, bigger. We have the different colors you could choose for the background. Content flex layout. So this is, it's very similar to the button. Just think of this as a button, but right now it has the icon turned on initially and the text turned off initially. Um, so if you go to the text and turn it on and then turn off your graphic, it's no different than a button. And you can make this auto. here and then when you go to your text you can make that say something like menu item okay you can turn off your border radius add in your padding so basically it looks just like a button but it triggers a drop down just like this so you have all the same settings as your button um, except for the toggle where you can just add a specific layout for that. Uh, the reverse layout, same thing, column. These are all the same as the buttons, so we're not gonna go over those too much. Um, you have your text enable and disable, a primary and secondary. You can go ahead and do that. You have all of your text settings here, your graphic setup, and then we went over your primary and your secondary particle setup here as well. So let's go ahead and we can actually turn on the graphic so that you have both. Looks just like a button. There is one other uh, option, which is drop down. So if you click on the drop down, you can see that you have your white background here, which can be changed. And you have your width. You can change it based on pixels, EM, REM. Your drop down, so you can actually change the drop down margin. Just like so. Your borders, your border radius. Your padding. And your drop shadow. So right now there's a drop shadow, but if you disable it, you turn that off as well. And you also have your customize where you can do your ID, your class, element CSS, and hide during breakpoints. Okay, let's move on to content area modal. This is the exact same settings as the drop down. You have your toggle, you have all those options, and you have the customize. But instead of a drop down, you have your modal options. Okay, so if we click on this button, it appears here. You see that you have your X at the top right hand corner. So your base font size can be changed. 
Your close book button could be top left. So if you do that, it'll then be in the top left hand top left hand corner when you click on the content modal. Your closed dimensions, so you can make that bigger, or you can use the um, the dimensions for putting it far away. Content max width, you can change the width of your modal content. Your overlay color, your close button color, and what it looks like on interaction. So you can actually change that to, let's say green. So it changes the green. And your content background, you can make that a different color as well, or transparent. And then in order to get rid of the box shadow, you just turn these to all zero. You can also change the, um, let's see, the design, we have all of that there. So we have all of our settings right here right now. And this isn't showing because we don't have the content background. Let's go ahead and change that back. So we have this here as well. Let's see, any questions about the modals? <laughs> Rocky, yeah, we don't have to, you don't have to code those anymore. Everything is just a drag and drop element basically, which is really great. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and we'll go ahead and delete this. Move on to content area off canvas. So this is the same as the previous ones, except when you click, it has the off canvas that'll pop in from the side. The off canvas settings allow you to go ahead and have the location. So if you want it on the left to the right, left will put it over here on the left hand side, right on the right. Your closed dimensions will be up here. Your closed buttons up here. Um, you can change that to whatever size you want. Content max width, you can make it so it's bigger or smaller. Overlay background color. Your close button, so it's up here on the top. And your content background, you can change that as well. Uh, the border and the box shadow are also options. You can see the box shadow over here. Let's go ahead and see if we can change that to white, just to be a little bit more noticeable. So you see it over here on the right hand side. Rocky says, does a new modal make the background lock? I ran into trouble with navigation collapse, not locking the background on mobile, making the address bar disappear, messing up the design. I'm not sure what, you, what you're asking when you say lock. What do you mean by lock? Okay, so off of canvas, those, the content areas are all similar. It's just how you're toggling them on and off. Let's go ahead and move on to the counter. And we're just about halfway through, so we only have a few more uh, elements that we're gonna be discussing today, and then we'll have the rest in a separate video. So the counter allows you to go ahead and have, let's just go ahead and delete so we can show what it does when you add it. You can see that it counts up to a certain number. Now I know there may be a lot of questions on this one, and I'll try to get them answered as best as I can. So we have the max width and the max height, I'm sorry, the width and the max width, your starting number. So if you want it to start on 100 and end on 1000, you can do that. Your prefix. So you can have different prefix or suffix. Let's go ahead and add those um, here. We have our prefix here. I would suggest putting the space. Then we have the suffix. I would suggest putting the space before. So that you have something like this. So we have over blank subscribers. Boom. Over a thousand subscribers. We can do something like that. Um, you can have it so that the text is above and below. So you could turn that on. And then you can do check this out insane 
So you can have text above and below and to the left and to the right. We have the counter margin. So let's go ahead and add some margin around that. So it adds it around the entire margin and not just the numbers. We have the number margin where we can add top and bottom right there. Number format, so we can change the font family, weight, size, letter spacing, all of those. We can go ahead and change it just for that. Now remember, it does change the prefix and the suffix. So if you don't want those to be changed, um, then don't change those here. Number styling, we can center this, write a line, things of that nature. Different colors for the numbers. Uh, text shadow, if you wanted to go ahead and add that. and the before and after text. So this is the top and bottom. Change those to different fonts. And we also have the line height and letter spacing. Um, make the body height 100% when scrolling through nav. So I, I don't think I'm still understanding on the um, on the background lock. Thanks, Tim. We only have about one more, one or two more after this, and then we'll do the um, we'll do the rest in another video. So before and after style here, you can do all of that, and then we have the customize, which is the ID, the class, element CSS, and hide during breakpoints. Let's go ahead. And I know that you all are wondering about, well, what if I have, you know, a million? One, two, three, one, two, three. So you have that, but it doesn't have any commas or anything like that. So if you add a comma, then it doesn't work. So my suggestion would be if you wanted to do something like that, you could do um, one, and then your suffix could be that. Oops, forgot the comma. You can do something like that. That looks better. So you can do something like that. But other than adding that, that's the only way to do commas or anything like that inside of your counter, unfortunately. Okay, let's do the gap. The gap allows you to basically just put a space in between your content. And as mentioned before, it's a great way to make it so that buttons go below each other. You can have horizontal or vertical. So let's do a 25, let's do a bigger gap. And we can do something like this. So horizontal, things like that. And then we have our vertical. Um, not sure why there's a base font size when there's no text but the gap size is all you really need. Customize, you can have it so that it hides on breakpoints, as well as the ID, the class, and the element CSS. Let's go to a global block. Basically, the global block allows you to insert a block that you've already created, and your options are select a block and customize. ID, class, element, CSS, and hide during breakpoints. Let's see. Uh, the headline. The headline is a big one. So it adds it like this, and it looks like it's a regular text. So it may be confusing at first. You can choose your base font size. You can also choose which tag it's going to be. So if you have an H1 through H6, div span, or paragraph. You can allow the over, overflow. So if you set your width, it'll allow the overflow and put the ellipsis right there. If you turn that off, it'll just wrap it down. You can turn on typing so that it adds different sections. Like type text, you can go ahead and do that. Let's turn off overflow for a second and turn this back on auto. You can do something like that. So it's a great way to catch someone's eye when they're um, 
getting on your website and then draw them to that part. The background, you can go ahead and add a background of this. Let's turn off this typing. For the text content and layout, we can go ahead and do the same thing with the, we did with the button. We have row and column. This allows us to work with our graphic that we can turn on later. And then from there, we can go ahead to a column or to a row. Um, we can do start, horizontal, center, and things of that nature for uh, flex. Same with the vertical. Margin adds it around the, the red and not to the red. Same with the padding to add it to the red, but not around the red. Okay, so then we have our border as normal, the border radius. Uh, box shadow, which is what we've been discussing before. The text content margin. So if you wanted your top of the text to be bigger, you can do that. It works as like a line height to line up your items of your graphics and your text. Your text format, we can change those. As well as the font size, letter spacing, and line height. We also have text style, normal, italic, left, center, right, justify. Underline, strike through, those all are consistent throughout all the elements. And our text shadow. So the one thing that's new is subline, sub headline setup, and we could turn that on. This allows us to put a subheadline right below the main headline. This could be uh, the same uh, each, each element or it could be a span. And you can also change the spacing as we did with the button and then reverse it so that it's on top or bottom. The subheadline has all the same um, characteristics as the primary headline to change all the text styles. And then we have the graphics so that we can turn the graphic on or off and we can have the image or font icon um, right there for us to choose that we've uploaded ourselves. We have the graphic margin as we mentioned before and then the graphic icon. We have the primary icon right here. And there is no a secondary icon because there's no hover functionality with headlines. We can change the color of the icon, just like this. And then we can have the background of the icon changed. A border, the border radius, as well as the box shadow and text shadow for the icon are all there as well. And we also have the customize for the ID, the class element in CSS. Okay, so for the elements, we're gonna go ahead and stop right there for all of the elements. Um, join us in our next video. If you guys have questions from images, lines, maps, navigation uh, elements, things of that nature, and we'll go ahead and explain all of these in the next video. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments below, and I hope you guys have a great rest of the day.